Welcome to SelfDiscoveryMedia.com, where we discover the communities that are making a difference in the lives of others. Our self-discovery is something we are all making on our life's journey. Here you will find the people that will be your guidance, that will be your inspiration, that will be there for you in support on your journey of life. Do enjoy. Our next show is... Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition for the love of music right here in Self Discovery uh, Media.com. I'm forgetting where I am for a second. I'm your host, Sarah Troy. I remember that. I'm my wonderful guest, musician here today. I'm going to see if I can honor her name, Chrysanthi Papas. I hope I have honored that name properly. Um, correct. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. She's got this fabulous. Um, COVID recovery anthem called Hug a Million Times. Oh my God, don't we want to get out there and just hug people? It could almost be kind of a molesting each other, just trying to get a <laughs> hug in there. We are starved for that physical contact of just holding somebody in our arms. And she's written this beautiful song, which we will be closing out the show with, plus a couple of other, a fun number of piece, uh, pieces of music that will be here on her, on her posting. Um, she's sound and style. She's a singer songwriter. She's been compared to Nora Jones and Diane Krall by Jazz Times Magazine and uh, to Karen Carpenter and Carol King, um, all the music guide, uh, by Music Guide, her jazz song, writing style has been compared to Randy Newman and Candice Magazine, while her pop songwriting has been compared to Carrie King and as well as her vocal gentleness, but she has a husky, passionate voice of Bonnie Ray and uh, the swinging playfulness of Ella Fitzgerald. You're quite a combo there, my dear. <laughs> I guess <laughs> but so. You're very much yourself, though. Um, you know, performing based in the Boston area, she is a full-time entertainer, playing on an average 200 performances a year at theaters, concert venues, singer-songwriter series, festivals, resorts, clubs, private events throughout New England and New York City. She's also performed throughout the U.S. Caribbean and parts of Europe as a uh, retro pop singer. She's performed uh, pre-shows for Sheryl Crow. Uh, Hart, uh, Queen of Adam um, Lambert, or I love Adam Lambert, he's fantastic, the Doobie Brothers, Stanley Dan, Steely Dan and the B2s, Chicago, Ray Speedwagon, and as a jazz singer, she's opened up for Bradford um, Marseille, uh, Chuck Manigong, maybe pronouncing all of these um, right? Uh, Chuck Mangione. <laughs> Mangione, Mangione, the Yellow Jackets, and Manhattan Transfer, Cheryl Benton, and Kevin Mahogany, and Carrie Burton, and uh, Makutu Ozone. And she's also been the musical director and performer of many other prestigious events. This lady gets around. That is the point of this. She gets around because her music is something that needs to get around. You're very versatile. But having just listened to three of your pieces of music, you are singing from the heart and the soul. You know, it doesn't matter what form it takes, whether it's pop or whether it's jazz, it's you can hear the soul, you can hear the heart and uh, the soothing voice. But at the same time, that that voice that just kind of wakes up people and enlightens people, which is uh, a wonderful gift to have as a singer, isn't it? Welcome to the show, love. Thank you so much. My goodness. What an introduction. <laughs> <laughs> what you have. You wear so many hats. And that's actually the mark of a good performer, isn't it? Is to be able to be versatile and adjust according and not just kind of be a one, you know, one genre. I mean, I find as a, if you want to be a full-time musician and uh, entertainer, you kind of have to wear all the hats. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a tough business. So you have to just be able to do it all <laughs> as much yes. as you can, as yes. much as you can, but you have to be authentic to yourself. Like you said, yeah. you know, do, do what is what you do. Don't try to do something that isn't what you do, but at the same time, do as much as you can. Yeah, and actually it's that discovery of how versatile you are. You know, once you know what your core is, that's your generator. You know, you know, a kind of which instrument to take it into. Um, and as I'm looking at your studio right now, there's many instruments in the background there. Oh, right, right. <laughs> do you right. play all of them or is that for your band? Uh, I play all of the things that are in here. Um, let's see. My drum set is right here. So I do play the drums. I mainly play piano. And on the wall, I do not play that mandolin, <laughs> but I do play, <laughs> I do play the ukulele and 
I think there's two ukuleles on mm-hmm. there. And one's, one's a guitar lately. I do play that. Ah. Um, in various other like percussion stuff. So my main instrument is is singing, then followed by piano, followed by drums. And then all of the others are more of a hobby. So right. just, you know, I just love music. So if they're and over where you can't see, there's a harp and, um, you know, lots of other fun little gadgets. <laughs> I like to have fun. And kind of wherever your mood takes you, right? Right. Is, is the wonderful thing. I mean, being a musician, especially a working musician, um, you know, COVID aside, obviously everybody was on pause or Zooming it instead of actually doing the performances. But being, you know, being able to sustain yourself as a working musician, it's an art in itself, isn't it? Because, uh, you know, so, and, and I know that, you know, one of my guilty pleasures in interviewing musicians, you know, performers is that, this is who you are. This is your heart and soul. You know, you you couldn't do anything else as authentically as you are doing. But to actually sustain yourself doing it, well, there is an art around that, isn't there? Right. And I, if you wouldn't mind me changing things for a second, can you hear that noise outside my window? I hope it's not distracting. Okay. <laughs> the landscaper decided to start mowing the lawn right outside my window. <laughs> it happens a lot. You weren't hearing like what I'm hearing. Anyhow. Um, so I apologize for that if, if anything is causing a distraction. Um, yes, so making a living, um, I guess that's, you know, people have asked me, you know, what are you the most proud of kind of a thing? And I think that probably is the answer because I've never had to have another job. Mm-hmm. A lot of musicians, you know, it's their, it's not their day job. You know, right. they have a day job and then they're a musician on the weekends or something. But I've always been a musician and singer and I've never had another job in my entire adult life. So um, I have taught piano on the, you know, as a part-time thing, but really the majority of my income and the majority of my time is spent performing music and writing music. So um, yeah, I mean, it's not always easy and you don't always have gigs that you enjoy most Mm -hmm. of the time. As I'm getting older, I have more things. not allowing gigs that I don't like anymore. <laughs> right, getting exactly. Getting to the point where I can finally say, yeah, yeah no, I don't want to play that. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm finally getting to the point where I can name the, the performances that I want and the, the more desirable venues are coming after me and that kind of thing. Right. But, you know, it took a while to get to that point. And uh, in the beginning, I just said yes to every every gig that was offered to me. It and reminds me of, have to do to, to make you, a do, you do. Even Michael Caine, he, he did this movie, Dress to Kill where he's a, a trans, trans dresser murderer. Uh, and he said that was purely to pay the mortgage, you know? And sometimes, yeah, you know, the bills have to be paid. But I mean, it doesn't mean right. you don't put your whole performance in it, but it's just not quite the venue that you would like to pay. Yeah, right. You, you wouldn't have chosen that. But no. it's like, oh, you know, I always say like either a gig pays well or it's fun. And usually it's one, you do it for one or the other. If it's both, that's like the ultimate. Yes. <laughs> if yes. it's paying well and you're having a great time, that is the ultimate. But often it's just like the gig pays great, but I'm really not enjoying it. Or the gig doesn't pay well, but my gosh, what a blast to, you know, be yeah. in this environment. Kind right, of thing. exactly. Uh, there, there is the, the music currency. Right. And the, you know, yeah. the soul currency. I was just and say, you have to feed your soul at the same time. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because if, you know, um, if you're just playing the kind of the same old music day in and day out. And, you know, my mother was an actress, a stage actress. And she, she said, you know, the performance changes according to the audience. And that's very true. Totally you know, true. Yeah. totally true. Oh, my gosh. Completely. I mean, there's nothing worse than looking out and seeing, you know, somebody kind of zoning out. And then there's nothing better than seeing somebody so enthusiastic and yeah. singing the words to your song. And yeah, completely. It really does. It ignites you. Yes. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. And I kind of, I suppose it adjusts your performance as well, you know, because, you, know, you, you, you know, if you've got a dead audience out there, maybe you're going to change it up and wake them up. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I have a saying that I say, spark it up. Yeah. Spark it up. Yeah. And um, yeah, exactly. Spark it up. <laughs> now the song a million hugs you know we we are in that you know slowly coming out as more people are getting vaccinated and things are opening up 
and we don't want to go back to normal because normal wasn't working um you know it's a new norm now where right, i think we're right. we're far more compassionate of each other more aware right. of each other and i think in that you know sometimes it's like when you have a kid you have to take it away for them to appreciate it and kind of that's what COVID did it took things away from us so that we could appreciate Completely. it completely and then as you come back and you perform you know it's like nectar for people for you as the performer but also the audience because they just want to soak you up have you performed yet yes i even during COVID, i performed outdoors last summer mm -hmm. um i haven't performed indoors at a concert venue yet but i have performed outdoors last summer and i have things coming up this summer my first indoor concert venue performance is this fall so mm -hmm. um but yes i have but like you said going back to what you said about covid um it really for me it really was like this dividing line mm -hmm. of what's important in your life and kind of you know forced you to take take a step back and say okay everything's been wiped out of your life I mean, as far as jobs i, I shouldn't say everything my right. gosh i'm so thankful for family and loved yes. ones and and my health you know so i I don't mean that that's been taken away from me. Thankfully, I stayed healthy during this time, and so did our loved ones. But, um, but job-wise, you know, I lost. I think I had it was last March. I lost like 14 gigs that month, and then I just lost the whole rest of the year. Yes. So that was like a real eye opener of well, which which gigs do you miss, and which things do you want to go back to, and what you know really kind of was a changing point for me. And I started doing an online um you know similar to the fact that you've been doing this podcast online show for seven years and i started doing um an online performance just because it was going to be a one-time thing and that was the march 20th of last year the third week it was the week after everything had shut down and i thought you know i really need to connect with my audience again and i just wanted to like play something so i just did a solo uh piano and vocal concert in my house mm -hmm. uh, with um, YouTube Live. And I, I did it on Facebook as well, but I found YouTube Live was a better format for me. Anyways, it went so well that everyone was like, please do this again. Yeah. So I said, all right. So I did it the second week. And I didn't have a theme. It was just like people could write requests in the live chat. And I was able to interact. And I felt like I was actually with yeah. an audience, even though I was in an empty room. And um, anyway long story short we just had week 60 mm -hmm. last friday mm -hmm. and that was really like a life-changing thing that never would have occurred had COVID not been the catapult right. that kind of caused that to happen it's so weird how mm -hmm. life kind of just uh, you know opportunities open up out of the craziest places yep. and and the same thing with the song hug a million times and and so the title of it is hug a million times parentheses a million hugs because everybody refers to it as a million hugs <laughs> yes yes but anyhow <laughs> if you're looking for it on on itunes or wherever it is under h hug a million times anyways um that again was kind of this thing that came out of just organically yeah occurred i was sitting at my piano and i had been vaccinated my first vaccine and I knew I was now going to be able to see my loved ones close up. So yep. my niece had a baby during this time during COVID and, you know, it was this really scary time. You weren't even sure her husband was going to be able to go with her for the mm -hmm. delivery. Thankfully he was able to go and everything worked out. But anyway, we'd never been able to meet our niece and, and see her in person, but every day, she calls on the phone at lunchtime and we see the baby and we so so that she would recognize us when we finally mm -hmm. met her in person so anyway as i was thinking about all this like oh my gosh i'm finally going to get to hold the baby at this point she was now um like eight months old so i'm like oh my gosh i'm going to be able to hold the baby i'm going to be able to hug carrie i'm going to be able to hug you know my just different various loved ones that were going through my head so i'm sitting at the piano and like the sheer joy of that just yes. came like it feels so good to be together and that was the first part of the song i wrote was the chorus and just that feeling of oh my gosh it feels so good to be together who knew just being together could make you feel that yes. good something we so took for granted right um, yeah you know just like 
hanging out with people and playing a game or having dinner yeah. across the table and stuff. So that's how the song was born. It just kind of like literally jumped into my head. And then, um, and then the second part, uh, it feels like it has been forever. And then the next part. So all of this part came right away. I just want you to know that I'm not letting you go. And then I was stuck. And I was like, well, then what? I don't know if I'm letting you go until what, until what, until what? And so sometimes I write like filler words and I go back and change them, put the real words yeah. in. So I thought, well, I'll just say for now, like until we get to hug a million times. So I put that in. And then I thought, well, yeah, that's kind of goofy. I, I don't know if I'll stick with those words. And then the more I thought about it, I'm like, well, that is exactly what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I really want to hug a million times. <laughs> I'm committing to that. Yes. I'm committing to it. That is the song. That is my now focal point. Because as a songwriter, you need a yeah. focal point. You can't just write all of your feelings in one song. So I was like, okay, that's the focal point. I want to hug a million times. And then from there, I then backed up and wrote the, the verses to the song and, and how we uh, would arrive at the point of, and then I thought, well, how am I going to say it feels so good to be together when we're still not quite there? Because I wrote this before people were really together yet. And I was trying to envision it. And I mean, even now, you know, people are still being really cautious, but a lot of people are fully vaccinated and I am thankfully able to be with people. So it's wonderful. But I was still in the mindset of like, what will it be like when we're mm. finally there? Yes. So it just kind of organically came to be. And then I sang it on my show, my Friday night show, which is now called Chrysanthi's Virtual Piano Bar. Um, and the reason I kind of turned it into a piano bar is because that was more interactive. And I didn't yeah. want it to be a concert where it's right. just me performing. It's like, no, we're all in this. We're all singing along. Yeah. And yeah. more intimate. You know, yeah, exactly. So, um, so I sang the song on the show and the reaction was like unbelievable. Oh my gosh, that's exactly how I feel. That's exactly how I feel. So then I went into the studio to record it and um, sent it out to, you know, people. And the response was just unbelievable. Yeah. Just everyone saying, this is exactly how I feel. Exactly. And as a songwriter, that's what you try to do. Mm. You try to capture, mm -hmm. I feel like a sense of responsibility to be the spokesperson for people that can't, can't, um, you know, don't have the words to right. to say how they feel. But that's what a song is about. It's the, you know, the poet of the time and it's speaking to the times. And why do songs mean so much to us? Because they're, you know, they're, they're very relative to what we're going through either individually or collectively. And, you know, everybody's just dying to get out there and hug. I've just had a, a, a my first grandson born. And fortunately, he's only an hour and a half away, and I've been getting out there and, and hugging. And it's like, oh. my daughter said, you can stop kissing him now. No, I can't. <laughs> no, you can't. You can't. <laughs> no. I know. No. That's how I was with my niece. Oh, my gosh. When I finally hugged yeah. her. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it, you, we took those type of things for granted. And I think this is, you know, it was a wonderful gift. And yes, no, and honor all the people that have lost their lives or lost their businesses. I yes, know. it's, I know. it's, um, it's part of your life journey to go through, but at the same time for the masses, it's been a wonderful time of reflection of what's important. And as you've, as you said, you know, there's certain gigs I'm not going to go and do anymore. I don't need to, you know, um, I've, I've got another avenue now as well as the live and, uh, and you're reaching people beyond the stage because you know now you're reaching people around the world that wouldn't have known of you so there's always a redirect in something and it's just a question are we in tuned enough to hear it and uh, you know I think the best songs when you speak to the artists are the ones where it definitely does you know come out of them for the way they feel a kind of a song that you would like to have sung to you right 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 exactly and the, and the songs that are the most vulnerable are always the ones that I get the most requests for. Yes. The songs that I thought, you know, I don't know if I want anybody to hear this because it's so personal. <laughs> and then when you play it, people just just absolutely love it. Um, yeah. Well, your your backyard hard. is like that. I mean, yeah, you know, you 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 know, you you're talking about just singing in your backyard to you know to the breeze and. 
and and you know it's like the industry that wants to change you manufacture you and and dictate you and it's like but why can we not let the artists be in their beautiful organic selves because that's what we fall in love with that's the music we fall in love with the moment they start manufacturing you uh, or managing you in in that stereotype way we, we're losing a lot of the ingredient of the artistry that we loved so much right absolutely and the, the way i wrote that song was i was unfortunately in a court case with this recording contract blah blah long story anyway after that whole thing happened i thought you know how did this happen all i ever wanted to do was sing in my backyard for the pure joy of singing yeah and so that's why the words to that song say, you know, I think I'll sing in my backyard. And if my life gets hard, I'll keep on singing to the rhythm of the breeze. You know, it's like, I don't care if my life gets hard, I'm still going to keep singing. And, yes. And, but that, that song was kind of like born out of pain. Mm. And it was one of the songs I thought, I'll never sing this for anybody. It's just kind of a cathartic way to tell my story and starts off with the back when I was a little girl, you know, goes all the way back to, you know, singing in my backyard for the pure joy of it. And then yeah. here I am, you know, all these years later in this, in this just disaster of a court suit. And, um, you know, I was just so depressed and, and that song just kind of healed me. Mm. It really just was able to, to get my feelings out and then to, to remind myself, you know, don't worry about it. Don't worry about the industry trying to screw you. Yes. You're still going to sing for the joy of it. And that will, you know, ultimately shine through. And that's exactly what happened. So, but it was one of those songs I didn't sing out in public for probably a couple of years. And when I did sing it, I got such a great reaction. And people was, were saying, other singers said, oh, that's my story. Yes. Well, look and at Taylor I, Swift. Right? right. So she took all of her old songs and re-recorded them. So I in your know. face, man. You know. <laughs> I love her. Yeah. She is so ballsy and yes. so just, she really stands up to the industry and yeah. refuses to be told what to do. I just I yeah. think I have such respect for her. She's like a, a hero in the industry as far as I'm concerned. Yes. And and need more people like her. But you know, whether it's you know, as, as somebody who is a musician hearing that song everybody's going through that hard time and it's like you know you're singing to to the rhythm of the of the breeze which you know i'm always saying to people go with the breeze <laughs> the breeze is your fluidity it is your rhythm of life tap into it um there's always something that we have to face that is uncomfortable that is unpleasant but what it should never do is take away you from you right and i look at it as a as an abstract thing of that's happening to you but it mustn't define you so your song is that of liberation. You you know, you can take this away from me, but you can't take my song away from me. Right. Right. Exactly. You can't take the music. You can't take the music out of you. You know, it's, it's going to be there. And the yeah. joy, the joy that music brings, because sometimes that gets lost. As yes. A as a working musician or as a working anyone, you know, Whatever you your job monotony, is, yeah. you know, even if you became a school teacher because you yeah. loved it and then eventually you get burnt out, you have to always re refine right. that joy and the reason why you started to do whatever it is that you do. So that's kind of a thing you go through all the time, r reminding yourself of that. Mm. You know, I know that I, I interviewed uh, was it, uh, uh, Gerald Bright, who's a saxophonist. I, I call him a saxophonist because you know, the, mute, the saxophone is really. <laughs> is it, um, Gerald, Gerald Albright? Yes. 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 Oh, yeah. I've, I've heard. Yes. Yeah. And, I and what a cool guy. And, you know, he was said, you know, he was on American Idol there for a while. And, you know, and he's been managed over 30 years to be a working musician. And, you know, sometimes it's just that gig or, you know, you're just playing that. And sometimes it's you. You know, I think kind of some of the best music is when you can just get a musician just to jam or just set themselves free and yeah. just let it go. I mean, totally. that, you know, oh, you know, then it's, ha, huh, you're, 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 in, you're in that moment of greatness there as it organically comes out of them, whether it'll ever be a song or not. It's that, yeah. you know, especially if you get a, a few musicians together jamming and one starts playing, the other one just joins in and, ah, oh, heaven, 
heavenly. Right. It's like a musical conversation. Yes. Uh, you know, and you can't really explain it to people that aren't musicians because you're just, it's just such an organic thing that mm. happens. And so I sing both, you know, adult contemporary pop and jazz. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of have this dual life where I'm, I perform in both of the both venues and I've been fairly successful at, at both of them. But anyway, the reason I love jazz is for that reason, because there are no, mm -hmm. you know, it's coloring outside yes. of the lines. It's yeah. just no boundaries. You just can, you can sing whatever you want to sing, however you want to sing it. It doesn't have to sound like the recording because right. nobody wants that. They want, yeah. they want the surprise. They want to see what you're going to do differently this time. Yes. You know, you never sing the, the song the same twice. It's just, I love that. Now, isn't it, um, who is the big singer that um, never does that? Like she can sing her same song a thousand times, but it will always be slightly different. Oh, uh, I don't know. This, I, I could say that probably about a lot of jazz singers. So I'm not quite yeah, sure yeah. which one you're uh, referring to. Um, but, yeah, um, no, I'm, I, I don't know if it's Rita Franklin or um, Patty, Patty LaBelle. Oh, Patty LaBelle. I think she's one. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, I had a young guy on uh, Justin Johnson, who is uh, Americana blues, and he plays the guitar and people making guitars out of all sorts of weird instruments like oil cans or, you oh, know, cool. when, when I first came to, to notice him, he was using a shovel, a spade that had been converted. Wow. And like, it, it's just, he just gets there and he can make music out of any of that. If there's strings on it, he can make music. And it's that Americana blues. And, and it, it just, ah, you know, it just, I love that. I love kind of what I call eavesdropping on an artist when they're just playing for themselves. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Because that's when you're really your authentic self. Yeah. 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 In fact, I, this is my music room, but my other room has a, my grand piano in it. And that's where I really just lose myself. This right. This is kind of my workstation. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The other room is my like where I just let it rip. But go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, no. But, but that's the point, isn't it? It's the end. And we're always asking people um, to find their authenticity, you know, to, to be organic. I love watching, you know, um, the, um, competition shows of singing, you know, the voice of Miracle Idol or this or that. And you see somebody coming in that might be a little bit raw, but that God given talent that is there and then how it gets refined. And then you've got the people that are, you know, technically perfect, but they lose you because there isn't the attachment. And we we want you to sing a perfect song. And yes, it would be nice if you were in pitch, but we want to feel you. Absolutely. We That's want that attachment to you because you're singing to a heart, right. soul, and spirit. You know, right. we don't want a generic yeah. one. Exactly. People, that's such an like undefinable quality. I used to play with a drummer that played like a machine. Mm. So he was like technically good, I guess. I mean, you know, he could do all sorts of fancy things, but I never felt it with him. You know, he was yeah. like, dun, 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 dun. I don't know. But then I've played with other drummers where it's like, oh my gosh, that groove is just, yeah. You yeah. Just feel it, yeah. feel it in your soul. So you, you can say that for singers and, and any musician, like they really, if your heart is in it, it shows and everybody else feels it. You can see that actually on the voice with the with the, the the band is just exceptional. The amount of songs and different genres that they have to learn. Yeah. You know when they are um, backing a performer, you know, they're in right. it. It's they've just become a band. Mm -hmm. Right. It is no longer just this person singing. They're in it there. And it like it is an entire performance that you're seeing there. And you can just see you know, that, oh, getting into it. And other times, of course, they're not seen or they're just in the background. But yeah, you, I love those. You know, you can see how the band, oh, I like that one. I like, yeah. we, we, you know, we're playing alongside with them. We're, you know, this is part of the group and the band. Right. And, and um, but, but I think but that's what I love. I mean, I don't know what happens afterwards with the winners. There's always this question of, that they don't seem to move further ahead as the American Idol people do. It's a tough industry to be in. Um, Unbelievable. And Unbelievable. A, a lot of thick skin has to happen and oh, for sure, for sure. a good manager has to happen. And, uh, you know, and sure. somebody who's really got your back because, you know, there's there's a lot of competition, but rather like food, 
how much food do we have in the supermarket or in the restaurants of choices? Music's the same thing. It's feeding your soul and your spirit. So we don't want to be just fed two or three different types of styles. You know, we want that diversification because it ignites our soul taste buds. Yep, totally. I used to play in a band that was like you're describing. I mean, every week was just like this musical experience of ecstasy and mm. and it paid well so it was it had the bowl double, double, <laughs> yeah. the so double yeah the next i used to come home yeah i used to come home saying i can't believe i just got paid to do that yeah. gig. i can't believe i got paid to do that gig it was such an absolute pleasure and an experience it, it was just unbelievable so um, and the audience would have gone home feeling exactly the oh same oh my gosh it was just like yeah. everyone was one yeah unit like we were all just together in it it was just an experience that everyone was experiencing together when those moments happen it's just magic because it doesn't happen in every band and it doesn't happen in every setting (laughs) i mean i saw santana in a big arena and i normally prefer more intimate settings yeah but i didn't sit down the whole time you know you just you just there with the music and and, you know you're just getting lost in it it's absolutely great but i i saw halisa uh Jose Feliciano, um, I'm going back a long time, so I'm aging myself, but he was in a very small, intimate setting, and you felt that every single song was being sung directly to you, yes. you know, and that he was looking at you whether he was or not, and it was just that intimate setting there that was just right. so lovely. So, um, and as far as jamming, one of my best experiences was in Rome, I'm going back many years, where, you know, we went to this club which all the performers go to afterwards and nobody spoke everybody just sat there we all just waited with our drinks and as they came in they got a drink they picked up their instrument they started playing then another performer and another performer and then you have like three hours of these guys oh, just jamming man. together into the wee hours of the morning until that everybody must have been spent. Crazy. Absolutely. I mean, it's forty years ago uh, or more, and it I definitely think that's is a European. Yeah, that's yeah. a European thing in general. Yes. You know, everything like kind of just happens like that. When yeah. I, I performed in Greece, um, right before COVID, uh, so in two thousand nineteen, I don't remember if it was eighteen or nineteen, but anyway, it was the September before that. And yeah, same kind of a thing in Greece. Things just kind of, everything happens really late at night. Yes. (laughs) And goes into the morning. And everything kind of is is like you're describing. Mm -hmm. So Wonderful. My my kind of scene. My kind of scene. Yeah, totally. I'm not into the big loud concerts and things like this. I mean, with with Santana, it was different. I love his music and and it was a different vibe. But I'm not really into those big ones because I do prefer kind of that. You know, I'm a part of the music. I don't play music. I can't read music, but I most certainly music is exceptionally important in my life. The people uh, that are the lovers of music are the people that the performers of music need. So mm-hmm. <laughs> if mm-hmm. you guys didn't exist, we would be out of a job. So, well, you know, um, the, the, the one thing that I do understand with like, you know, the quantum energy and everything else is that, you know, we're all energy. Every single thing is measured in energy and, um, I used to suffer from depression and I would play music, whatever music. And it wasn't the words that I was looking for. It was the music. And I realized after um, having somebody do galactic speak on you, which they speak in tongues, um, that it actually was the rhythm and the vibration. And it would literally reset me, reset my mood, reset me from the inside out. And that music would be something either to uplift me or to calm me or, or whatever the case is. And it is actually the frequency that is speaking oh. to, to your, your internal mind, heart and soul. And, uh, you know, then the words can mean something, but that music is so utterly powerful. It really it's, is. It's, it's, unwe- it's unbelievable. And it's so weird in that it's not explainable. Like, why can no. a certain chord... You know, if yeah. I'm playing uh, around on the piano, why can a certain chord just make me hurt? You know, I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. that chord is so beautiful that it hurts. Yes. Or, or you know, a, a melody is just, I don't know why. How can it do that? If you if you explain music to, let's say, someone came here from another planet or something, and they had never heard music, and you were trying to explain it to them, and you said it was a series of tones that, <laughs> you know, makes you feel feelings. Why? Why do we? Right. respond that way it's like just this, just play it for them 
<laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> unbelievable how it really touches everybody, yeah. yes. every kind of a person. And it doesn't matter the language. The music is a language, a universal language all of its own. I, a couple of years ago, our neighbor's um, uh, relative, I can't remember who, came here and he was a jazz musician that didn't speak English. Mm -hmm. And they wanted us to meet because they knew I was a jazz singer and that he was, a, I think it was a jazz piano player. Well, he was a lot of things, but he played piano. Anyway, I can't remember what country he was from, but he came over to, the, to my house, into this room. I have a digital piano over there. And so the neighbors were like, oh, can you guys play a song together? And so we were like, okay. So he started playing a song that I knew, you know, he didn't even really know. He just started playing a song that I knew and I started singing it and we, you know, I was playing another instrument with him too. And anyway, it was just so bizarre that he didn't speak English and I didn't speak his language, but we were speaking the same language. Oh, yes. It yeah. was just such a such a neat thing you know it sounds so cliche but it really it was so cool it was a cool experience yeah yeah no it, it just trends everything it's, it, i've actually met musicians that sing in english and i go to speak to them and they don't speak a word of english but can I sing know. it perfectly isn't that weird <laughs> yeah like isn't that um that korean band the k-pop yes. yeah don't they not speak english but they i sing think there's one or two perfectly. of them do and then the others not so, so yeah weird. Yeah, I know. Um, but, but, you know, it goes back to, you know, the rhythm and the tone, you know, is um, you have a beautiful tone. Uh, you know, that's why I can see where the Nora Jones comes into it, you know, definitely that beautiful tone. Well, Thank that you. tone is one to to set the stage of how you're going to listen. You know, you're going to relax and sit back and listen. Right. right, right. And then so that tone is in there. And then then, you know, you you go up or down, whatever you are doing, but you take us on it. So but, you you know, other songs, uh, you know, maybe more faster. And so you know that you're going to change your body structure to it. And that's the thing about music. It changes the way we are going to receive it, you know, in our stature. I mean, look at people in the car when they're singing something that gyrating in the car totally. and then and then other people are wanting to kind of meditate and relax everything about them relaxes because that tone of voice is just beautiful and if we use music in that way and the words that that speak to our situations or that are uplifting us i think that we would be so much better as a society i know i know i completely agree I completely agree. Um, b back to the meditation thing you were just saying. Yeah, there's certain music that, what does it do? It just brings you to that place yeah. that you can get in touch. Yes. And you can actually relax and, and quiet your insides. And there's only certain music that can do that for me because, like, when I've gone for a professional massage, which I haven't done in a, quite a while, but anyway, when I had, due, I. Due for yeah, one. <laughs> overdue. <laughs> but I'll say to them, please don't play piano music. Yes. Because I will analyze it the whole time because yeah. I'm a piano player and that to me is not relaxing. I right. feel like I'm at work. Um, so this like, because I'm a musician, music is kind of tricky. I have like a tricky yeah. relationship with it. When I'm going to relax to music, it has to be unrelated to what I normally perform. Like I love listening to reggae music because I don't perform reggae and I just like the groove of it. And I like listening to like that kind of transcendental like uh, like lots of drums and boom, mm, yeah, boom, yeah. like really slow inner music. Anyway, those are the only kinds of things that relax me because the rest of the time yes. I'm too busy analyzing the chord per chord pattern or you know trans transcribing something yeah. in my mind and yeah, you it know, doesn't switch really... you up. I'm like that in restaurants because I used to own restaurants, so I go there and immediately they're not paying attention to that table. This person needs to this, you know, right. yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can't switch it off. <laughs> yeah, right. You, you can't turn it off. You're no. so aware because that was your industry mm. and you know all the things they're doing wrong and the things they should be doing and the yeah. things you would do if you yeah. could, were doing it. Yeah, I know. I know. It's, uh, and it's like, ah, yeah. You know, just try and concentrate on the person you're with and don't look, right? Um, I, I love it when mixed of genres, one of, one of my ones uh, that I really love is um, Celtic Afro music. Ooh, and I don't you, think I've heard that. Oh, it's, uh, it's 
brilliant. It, it's the Celtic music, but, you know, has its own instruments, its own tone, along with the beat of the Afro. Oh, man. Oh, my God. And I think Ooh. there's a CD out there just called Celtic Afro Music, and it is fantastic to travel with, like if you've got a long drive, because yeah. each one is kind of ascending and ascending and ascending, and it and you're in the beat and you're in the rhythm. Ah, oh, fantastic. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, yeah, it, you know, we, we like different music for different situations, don't we? Absolutely. I, I mean, it, and as you said, it feeds your soul. For oh, sure. yeah. It, it's unbelievable. It, you know, sometimes if, well, for everyone, this just sounds so cliche, but if you're in a bad mood, you know, you listen to your favorite song and it yep. literally makes you feel better. Yes. Somehow. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. And as a songwriter, up. as a songwriter, when people say, you know, oh, that's my song mm -hmm. and it's something that I wrote. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's such a huge compliment to to feel like their song. Like I, I wrote a song called One Slow Dance a Day. I can't remember if that's one of the ones that I had sent to you, but it's a song that I wrote that gets a lot of airplay on um, different TV shows and stuff. But anyway, I, a lot of people have used it as their first dance in their wedding. Mm -hmm. And that's our song or this, you know, every time I hear that, I it's such a huge compliment to be the the conveyor of somebody else's feelings and somebody else's joy so um yeah so cool yes i, I just um no the christmas one you sent me the christmas one. Oh, okay you and me by the christmas tree yeah. oh yes <laughs> you and me by the christmas tree that's another one that i was fortunate to win uh, second place in the billboard world song Ooh. contest with with that song and um it's a song it's a love song about just being with somebody that you love on christmas eve and it doesn't have to be your spouse. It yeah. could be your cat. It could yeah. be your child. It could be your friend. It could be anybody that you just, you know, enjoy being with. And um, yeah, so that, that song, uh, kind of similar, similar sentiment. Mm -hmm. but, but, you know, that's the word, sentiment. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's numbers that we want that we just want to jump up and down and dance to and get into the groove. You know, it is the dance song. Um, you know, um, but then for the most of the time, we're listening to the music, you know, on our iPods or iPhones or in the car or while jogging or, you know, at home doing laundry. Um, and we want music that really does kind of speak to that heart and soul that is in many ways a reflection of how we feel, but in a lot of ways too, a tutorial, right, right on how to get through something. Right. Absolutely. I like you said, you know, so it's cathartic to how to get through something. Yeah. If you listen to a song and you heard that somebody else felt this way. Yes. So I guess I'm not alone in the way that I feel because this song was written by somebody else that feels as lonely as I do right now or as whatever, you know, however you're feeling. Just knowing in a song exists that is conveying your feelings is just you know, so helpful to know that you're not alone in something. Right. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Not alone. We're not alone. Um, right. You know, we do isolate ourselves, you know, and one thing, you know, COVID has done is, is to show how much we need each other, how much we need community, how much we need those hugs and just being there, being in each other's presence. And I think, you know, one of the things that we can drop a few things, you know, competitiveness and comparison and judgment. We can, you know, they're passe things and they're not productive and they're not creative and they're not encompassing. But the other thing I think we can do is let go of any expectations that we falsely have put upon ourselves and our lifestyles. So, you know, music is, is just a wonderful way to sometimes hear yourself through a song, have it ignite a conversation within you or why did that song mean so much to me? Why do I resonate so much with it? What is it trying to tell me? And a really good reflection time to actually go in and go, okay, what did that spark about me? What do I need to do about it? So that's, that's you know, why I say kind of the music is cathartic, but also that tutorial. It's that lesson that you need to learn. And why do you keep picking that song? Because it keeps wanting to tell you that lesson. Right, right. And I, when you said reflection, I, I wrote a song called Reflections that doesn't have any words. It's just a piano instrumental. Mm. And sometimes, like you said, it's the music that touches yes. you, not the lyrics. I mean, lyrics are great. And yes. obviously they tell a story and they tell how you're feeling. But if the music doesn't touch you, I really feel like that is more important. 
And um, so anyway, the song Reflections that I wrote was just that, like, how can I reflect and tell people how I'm feeling without words? And that's kind of its own, yeah. its own thing to be able, you know, to be able to do that. And sometimes I just sit at the piano yeah. and play and I'm not going to remember what I'm playing and mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not doing this on purpose to write a song. I'm just letting whatever feelings I have come out of me. And there's something about that. that's just yes. so healing. And um, if you don't play an instrument, I always recommend people that don't play instruments. You could still play around with an instrument. If there's mm -hmm. one in your house, if you have a piano in your house, but you've never taken lessons still just sit at it and just let your hands play, close your eyes and see what happens. Um, or if you own a guitar or a harmonica or something, just kind of let, the, let yourself experience it, experiment with it. And it really is, is so, is so life-changing. And mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't think you necessarily have to be a musician to still have that same experience. Yeah. I know that when I was a kid, I tried to play the melodica and every time I bought it out, my dog used to run and put her paws over her ears. <laughs> My cat does the same thing. Yeah. I have, I have one too. <laughs> just I, have, like... I have two of them. I have a red one and a blue one. Yeah. And she, every time the cat comes around my legs, and I thought at first that she liked it because she yeah. comes towards me. Yeah. You know, instead of leaving the room, she comes towards me. But she comes towards me like she wants to attack me. Like, <laughs> not that <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Something but, about yeah, it must must pierce the yeah, the, 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 tender the, ears. Yes, it, it can be quite harsh. Um, <laughs> but you know, there, there's another instrument, and that's your voice. And you don't have to be a great singer to sing. Right. You know, when raising my kids, you know, I sing to them. I would sing to them. My grandson right now, I sing to him. I, I may not have the words. I just repeat them. It's just the tone of voice going up and down, yeah. the rhythm. Um, I sing for myself. When my kids used to drive me crazy, I sang opera to them. Because I was like, anything to shut mum up, right? You know, but we don't have to, you know, again, don't be critical, don't be judgmental over your own voice or the way you're playing. You're doing it for you. Right. Right. Exactly. So if you're getting, you know, there's nothing better than singing in the car. Right. On a nice drive, you know, and uh, I, I actually, an experience in Greece, it was many years ago, um, I was walking along a pier on a perfect night with the stars and the moon out. And I just started singing. It was a song about my dad who had passed. And this young guy came up to me and he just started singing along with me, but his own song. But it, it just harmonized. And then we just nodded each other and walked away. I mean, it was just wow. one of those incredible moments, you know. Oh, so, my gosh. That is so cool. It only happens in movies. Nah. <laughs> I know. I know. I love when those, those moments happen. They're, they yeah. happen, you know, few and far between, but they do happen. Yes. I mean, but it is kind of like the corny song by uh, the Carpenters saying it, but Joe Raposa wrote it, that um, the one that says, don't worry that it's not good enough yes. for anyone else to hear. Yeah. Just sing, sing a song. I mean, that's so true, you know, yes. just sing. Don't worry that it's not good enough. Yeah, exactly. Um, do you watch any of the talent shows? I haven't in a while. Um, I, I usually get frustrated by them because I don't, don't agree with the judges. Exactly. I'm like, no, that person should have won. I know. And, and know. actually that just happened with American Idol where a kind of a country guy won. And, uh, and I was thinking like country um, voters are very, very good. But yeah. the, the humble guy, Willie, and when you talk about humble, just a simple, humble soul. Yeah. But when he sang, he elevated you. He elevated you, he took you to church, he took you to heaven. Yeah. You know, he, he just got in there and sang to your heart and soul and, and he was the runner up. Um, but I mean, he's got a, a, a future because that voice yeah. is just, and he was just a very humble person. And, right. and, and, you know, and yeah, I, ha I have watched those shows, but I just haven't in the last couple of years because I just get so aggravated. I know, I do. I agree <laughs> with you. I agree. Yeah, I, you know, because very often it's it's, more calculated as as opposed to kind of performance based but i mean <clears throat> you couldn't deny him yeah. you just couldn't deny him at all and cool. and you know there's so many young performers now 15 16 so mature and you know there there are, are wonderful indigo kids that are here to sing and it's not you know pop and bubble gum it's meaningful songs and it's just yeah. wonderful to see that because it's 
you know, they're kind of taking us down a path we need to go on and open up a great deal more, which then makes us seek the other music that's out there that we right. perhaps hadn't uh, paid attention to. Right. That's true. Um, I was going to say something about the American Idol thing. Oh, I was going to say sometimes um, the other thing that kind of annoys me is they always look for these performers that have a story. Yes. You know, that come from some kind of very yeah. unique story. And so I feel bad for the singers that don't have a story. Yes, exactly. Are, are amazing, Can I create you know, something? Yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, I, I know a girl that's uh, 18 years old and she's an amazing singer and she auditioned for something and they, they even said to her, well, you don't really have a story. Right. So she said, oh my gosh, you know, they thought I had a great voice, but I didn't have a story. So yeah, that's kind of a, another thing that, that annoys me about those shows. But yes, there are those people that have, you know, just have the authentic, yeah. beautiful voice and finally get recognized for it. So it is cool. Yeah. That's what I watch it for. You know, it's yeah. <laughs> uh, fast forward for all the other stuff. So, right, right. Um, um, but you know, I love any of those kind of shows because what I love is people stepping into, you know, like, well, I don't know if I'm good enough. I don't know if I can do this, but I'm on this big stage and I'm going to try and the recognition and then the, you know, the, the tutorial and the encouragement that they get and, and you just see them blossom and it's yeah. absolutely wonderful. You've come up, you know, kind of the hard way, the, the you know, the, the knocks um, right. on the rejections and the, uh, as you said, the lawsuits and the fighting for your own material. And, right. and you're still around and you're still there and you're still producing. So it doesn't matter what happens. You, you've got to have a bit, a bit of a tough skin in this industry. Um, yep. But what you've got to do is never let it take, never let it interfere with your heart, soul or spirit, because that is your instrument. Right, right. And then uh, when you were saying about the, the song, My Backyard, you know, when you yep. said about the lawsuit and everything and how I wrote that song strictly just kind of as a cathartic thing. And now it's become this popular yeah, it's song beautiful. My it's beautiful. Listeners. thank you but uh, anyhow this now being turned into a musical and uh, that's going to be produced um at a theater in new hampshire it was supposed to happen last year and of course covid put a stop to that so it'll be happening in 2022 so that was another kind of organic yeah. thing that, that yeah. just came to be the the playwright of the show um had hired me he used to be the owner of the winnipesaukee playhouse and he had hired me to come up and, and do a couple of shows up there as a cabaret performer at the time. And um, anyway, we got to know each other and he loves my songwriting. And he said, you know, would you mind if I built a musical around your songwriting, you know, particularly the song, My Backyard and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, we have an agreement and we worked it all out and I wrote some new songs to go with the musical and he took all of my existing songs or not all of them but mm. enough enough to fill the musical and so the so the musical is called my backyard and um they it's not about me though because i said you know i don't want this to be about me can you write a fictional story and just use my music so that's what we're doing so it's this fictional story that's kind of based on some truth and um but my gosh to think that something that yes. big came out of something painful is just so great <laughs> but isn't that the best yeah it's I mean, when, you, when, you, when you do look at some of the the biggest hits in the world you know there there was something that they were writing for themselves personally and but if it has such an effect on you why wouldn't it have an effect on everyone else yeah i know it have you heard that um, story like paul mccartney tells about how he wrote let it be when the um, beatles were you know he knew the beatles were going to be breaking up and he had a dream that his mother who had died, came to him and his mother's name was Mary. And she said, he telling the story says, and she said to me, Paul, let it be, let it be. And she and he said, and the next morning I just came out and sat at the piano and the song just came out of me. Right. And oh my gosh, I just love stuff yes. like that. Yes. You know? Yes. Um, I, um, Robert Williams, who used to be with the um, Beach Boys, Mm -hmm. um, he was with them for a few years and he said he was one day in the studio with Brian and, and Brian just got to the piano and started playing and there was no recording it, nothing like that. It was just him playing this music that he said was just out of this world. And then if you could have asked him to play it again, no, 
it was a totally in the moment thing, the gift of the now. And, and just one thing that would stay with him forever. Um, and he was the only audience. But, oh. you know, but if you can be, you know, I mean, are you inclined now to just put the recorder on your phone? And if you're going to do something because you don't know where it's going to go? Or do you remember something once you've played it? Um, depending on if I'm just kind of playing like you're describing just for the sheer joy of playing, then I don't even try to remember it. But if something comes to me like a good idea, I do have uh, voice memos on my phone. I used to write things down, but it's easier to just think yes. of your phone. In fact, I sang Hug a Million Times into the phone. I still have the original day that I <laughs> wrote. I'm going to keep this. <laughs> yes, yes, prosperity. Um, yeah, because I, I wrote it in E flat originally, and now I transposed it to the key of F because it just suited my voice better. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I write a song in a different key. Um, but yeah, I, I, I can usually remember it. And I think if I can't remember it, then it's probably not a good song because the best songs are memorable. Um, yeah, I can usually remember them, but I do put them into the voice memos. Sometimes I'll wake up in the middle of the night yes. with something in my head. And I always think I'm going to remember it in the morning because mm -mm. it's so clear. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'll have that in the morning. And then you have no idea. Yep. Yep. So now I you know that doesn't happen very often but now i just make sure just force yourself up and write it down because you're not going to remember it in the morning <laughs> right yeah um i'm like that with um, i do my own podcast every week which is just you know sarah's perspective you know um whatever is interest then i press play and out it comes and then i write it yeah. or i write it and then press play but it's um it's just what you know there's generally kind of a theme and like this week, it was priorities, need to change my priorities and help my oh, daughter good. with the baby. So, you know, yeah. and then it was that realization and then just let it come out. And then if you write something, you go back over it and you can rewrite or change a word or this or that. If I've organically done it, it's out there no matter what. But yeah, but that's the thing, right? You've got the baseline and the core of something can now you can refine it. And that's the beauty of it. But when something's good, um, yeah, you do definitely have to press record in the night because yes, there's something yeah. about the universe that, you know, downloads at night, but it doesn't retain in the morning. Yes. I know, I know. Do you do that? Do you lay in bed thinking of like, oh God, can... I mean, uh, I've been writing a book forever and I write it in my, in my twilight zone and then completely forget it the next morning. Yes. Oh. I know. Why do you always word things perfectly? Yes. When you're right in that in between yes. waking up. Because like, we're oh, out of our perfect. human consciousness. That's oh. it. We're out of that human consciousness and we're in our pure soul, spirit and heart consciousness, which is, is so much more clearer. If we could just stay there. Yeah, a little plug in, know? right? Just plug it in. Yes. and. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I mean, that's when I write you yes. know, clearly yes. And, and everything makes sense and even things that you don't understand about life suddenly make sense. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So the um, hug a million times is out there and most certainly getting its um, attention. And of course, you know, it just is a total reflection. And I, I let you call it the, the COVID recovery song because yeah. it is, it is about, and you know, as you see, people have been vaccinated um, or maybe haven't had, I haven't had my second yet. So I've only had the first, but you know, do we hug or don't we hug? And I'm a hugger, you know, so it's really hard not to hug. And, you know, somebody wrote an article today about observing people that are out there that are still just on their phones and not speaking to people and not interacting because they've oh lost the art gosh. of interaction, you know? Complete. That drives me insane. Yeah. yeah. I wish and they would like, I wish restaurants and stuff would force people to put their phones in a basket or something when yeah. they walk in. Yes. Pay attention, enjoy the meal, enjoy the person you're with. Yes. In, you know, I know. I know. It's, it's like, you know, everybody's been so scared about robots taking over. It has. It's called a cell phone. I know. And, uh, and it's, it's become, you know, completely the mind thing. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I know when you want to go to a concert, you want to kind of play your light or you want to record it. And right. that, but, but you know what? It is just immerse yourself in the music. Immerse, immerse yourself, yourself in the into moment. the experience. Yes. And once yes. you're fully vaccinated, get out there and hug yes. everybody that you yeah, love. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, and still use your common sense. If you aren't feeling well, if you have a cold, put the mask on because that's common sense. Please Absolutely. continue to wash your hands because that, 
you know, exactly. is common sense as well. Uh, be respectful for other people that are still a little bit nervous about it. But, right. you know, it. I think again, going back to gratitude, you know, I'm grateful that I'm seeing you. I'm grateful that I'm out. And, and you know, it's don't just be grateful for a week or two and then you're back to your old ways. You know, it's, stay in that state of gratitude, stay in that state of love and right. that sense of community and everything, you know, um, let everyone be your backyard. Absolutely. Absolutely. I completely agree with you. And it's been a pleasure to to be a guest on your show. Oh, right back at you, darling. It's been lovely having you. What's next for you? Uh, well, that musical that I told you oh. about, My Backyard, um, will be produced in January. So um, I have to have some work to, to finish up on that. And um, I hope it's you know, going to be filmed and shared and not just. The yeah, play. I think we're thinking about doing a live stream, even though it's going to be in person. We're thinking of streaming it at the same time. So great. That'd be yeah, fabulous. So I be want something. to know. I want to know. You have to let me know. Oh, OK. I will. I will. <laughs> Thank you. And then um, Hug a Million Times, just getting out there and performing that song. Um, I have another song that I wrote. I recorded at the same day of that'll kind of be the follow up. That's called Longtime Friend. And really just about you know there's something about the words to that say there's something about a long time friend who knew you when back when you were trying to get so far you know a long time friend is there's nothing like them yeah so uh so that's my next song coming out after hug a million times and um you know just continuing to create music and perform music and bring joy to people i feel like I was asked this morning, what is my definition of a musician? And I thought, um, a joy maker, a yes. bringer of joy. Yes, a <laughs> soul know, igniter, a heart pleaser, right. you know, and that's what music should be, or, you know, a foot dancer, you know, it's, you're everything, really, you know, whether, you yep. know, I mean, you're, you know, obviously, your songs are ones that can really do speak to the heart and soul, and that really make us think and reflect and yeah. and feel attached to um and that's the beauty of your music but whatever is out there it's just again step into the gratitude step into the you know the 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 love and the value of it and just since the beginning of time music has been the connector it's brought people together in Absolutely. celebration in ceremony in uh, in just you know harmony or healing and Let's just keep the music alive. Let's share it. Uh, let's get up and dance to it. Let's sing along with it. Let's yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's uh, let it be a uh, uniter. And you, you've got two beautiful songs right there that are most certainly that. So, well, thank you so much. Thank you, because it does feel so good to be together. Just like my song says. I mean, I wrote that because it really does. It mm -hmm. feels so good to be together. Totally. Yes. <laughs> it feels and, so good uh, to be together, even though we're on screen. It feels so good to be. Yeah. Together. Well, so. you know, that's the thing. Connection, connection, connection. We we are yep. meant to be connected. We're meant to be yep. a tribe, a village, a team. You know, we're not meant to. Be. It it is. I always say, discover what your instrument is. Learn how to play it, then find your orchestra to join and right. play that symphony that resonates out in invitation to everyone else. But life is about rhythm. It is about harmony. It is about flow. It mm -hmm. is about expression. And I think, quite honestly, art has a wonderful way of doing that. But I think music is the best way of doing that Absolutely. because I think it really speaks to us on so many levels. Absolutely. Now, how do people get hold of you and get hold of your music? Well, you can go to hugamilliontimes.com, hugamilliontimes.com. That will take you right to my website. Or you can go to chrysanthi.com, but that's harder to remember. Yes, yeah, so can you spell. spell that? So I, I will spell chrysanthi, K-R-I-S-A-N-T-H-I, chrysanthi.com. But I purposely have the domain name hugamilliontimes.com, just because it'll take you right to my home page, which has the song, and then it will also take you to my calendar of virtual performances as well as live performances and how you can get my music um, on iTunes or any any place there's music you can find me. Um, so, yes, that's how you can find me. Thanks and so you're much. still doing your weekly performances? I'm still doing that on YouTube Live every Friday night. Uh, I switched to 730. It used to be 7 o'clock, but now that what, the days what time are lighter. Zone? 
uh, in the Eastern time zone. Okay. So I'm in Boston, the Boston area, Boston, Massachusetts. So, but I have people that watch, my cousin watches from Hawaii and I have, yeah. <laughs> um, I have a friend in South Africa who mm -hmm. watches and, uh, we love music um, there, isn't there? 11 years, beautiful music there. Mm. Yeah, so I have people all over the world. But Eastern Time, if you go to my website, there's a direct link to that, to my YouTube page, and you can find me easily. My channel is Chrysanthi5 on YouTube Live. But again, if you go to hugamilliontimes.com, then just go to um, the calendar page that everything is there. So. Wonderful. Thank Please you. keep performing. Um, I will. I thank you for for making me feel appreciated and like my music matters. Because, oh, your music you most know, certainly does matter. Like it, it is very, <laughs> it is very warming. It's very enveloping. It's very poignant. Um, and um, but it also, you know, like as I'm looking out right now, this beautiful willow tree dancing in the wind. You know, I'm I'm thinking of the rhythm, of the breeze. That's right. That's right. right. So, you know, it's a. Uh, the music speaks to us for various reasons and we should listen and not just listen mindlessly, but truly listen. Allow our heart and souls to listen because that's really where the connection is, right? Yep, absolutely. So totally. please keep on, keep on creating. Thank you. Keep on doing what you're doing too and bringing people together and, and giving people the wisdom and, you know. Just it's easy when I've people. got people like you. I've been doing this okay. for nine years and, and uh, yeah, I, I just get to meet awesome people. I always say oh. ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Yes, and making such true. a positive that's difference true. in the lives of others. And, and people say, do you interview celebrities? And I said, everyone is a celebrity because we're that's celebrating true. everyone, but you truly are. And, you know, please keep on, keep on playing. Thank you. Thank music. you. Likewise, keep on doing what you're doing. So we're going to go out, folks, with Hug a Million Times. And as soon as you're able to, wherever you are, and uh, you've had your vaccine and everything is all nice status quo, open up your arms and just give somebody a hug, even if it's a perfect stranger, because I promise <laughs> you, heart-to-heart -heart hug is just going to ignite that heart, soul, and spirit, and it's going to be something that's going to mean so much to them. So... Um, by the end of it, hopefully you've hugged a million times. <laughs> Until Absolutely. next time, folks, remember, it's all in the music. Until next time, bye for now. Tired of being alone there on my phone I can't tell if you've been crying I feel part of me is dying Every day's the same Playing the waiting game It's just the way it is right now On our own and learning how Oh, but I don't like it this way
We hope that you enjoyed the show. You will hear many, many shows here at selfdiscoverymedia.com. We have new shows for you out every week. Just find them on our podcast or, or what's new. If you feel that you have something to share that makes a difference in the lives of others, or you too feel that you could be a host, please contact me at info at selfdiscoverymedia.com and we will be glad to speak with you. Have a wonderful day.